AIP and uh, it's uh, 11 o'clock and it seems to be going okay right now. I'm making up my lunch, which is gonna be another paleo bowl. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute, but so far so good. Before I get into what I'm eating today, I did wanna say what the autoimmune paleo protocol or AIP diet is, because I know a lot of people have questions about that. To start, those of us that are lucky enough to have autoimmune disease or diseases, tend to have a ramped up immune system where everything, you have an immune system where you have antibodies, right? That, you know, if a, a pathogen or a virus or bacteria comes in, your body will fight that as it should. Unfortunately, in the case of autoimmune disease, your body has started to recognize self and is attacking your own tissue and making antibodies against your own tissue, which is not a good thing. And so your, your body is always ramped up with your immune system and it is always on the attack. And that's what causes inflammation throughout the body and just, you know, a various number of symptoms that come from that. Now, a healthy person can eat a lot of foods like corn and dairy and gluten and all these different things. And it may do a temporary thing to the body that is not, you know, desired or negative. However, most people are not going to see any symptoms from this. Those of us with autoimmune disease, however, have a whole entire different system. Basically for us, most of us have increased intestinal permeability or otherwise known as a leaky gut where a lot of, you know, normally food is supposed to go through your system um, and just kind of get digested at little particles, minerals and vitamins are getting taken out and the body works as it should and then the rest gets excreted. But unfortunately, those of us with autoimmune disease tend to have like holes and things throughout our intestines. And so like food particles and larger things that are not supposed to normally get into the bloodstream, get in there. And then all of the immune system uh, surrounds it and starts doing the attack. And unfortunately there are certain kind of particles and proteins from food that look a lot like our own tissue. And in a later video, I'll get into like how autoimmune disease, you know, happens and all these different things. But that's just a basic understanding of what you need to know. Um, and so what autoimmune paleo does is removes a lot of the foods that tend to cause issues with people and with autoimmune disease and cause this whole entire inflammatory response. The idea is to remove them, help your body basically heal, help your gut to heal, and then start reintroducing these foods one at a time to see if you react to them. And hopefully by then, you know, you've had enough healing that you don't react to a lot of them. The basic premise of AIP is to do a strict paleo diet, but then you're going to also remove these extra foods. And these foods are things like nuts, all nuts, seeds, seed based spices. And those are things like cumin, mustard, nutmeg, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. Nightshades, nightshades are also things like tomatoes, white potatoes, uh, peppers, chili peppers, like the sweet peppers, and then uh, eggplants, and then also nightshade based spices. So, you know, things like chili pepper and, or chili powder and paprika. You also remove coffee and eggs and uh, all dairy. So not even like, you shouldn't even have ghee. And then chocolate's also removed too. And the opposite of Whole30, you can actually have sweeteners. So you can have maple syrup and honey just in a moderate amount. You don't wanna go crazy on these things. But because it's already such a restricted diet, it's okay to be able to have some treats once in a while because you, know, you don't wanna go completely crazy. <laughs> so if you remove all of these things, what exactly can you eat? I know that's always the first question everybody asks. Well, honestly, it's actually kind of easier because you don't have this huge like selection of things to eat anymore, but you can eat meats and vegetables and fruits and fats. And I mean, it's, there's still a whole abundance of things that you can eat. AIP does stress nutrient density. So there are certain things that you may not typically eat on an American kind of diet, like organ meats, like liver, tongue, heart, all of these different things that a lot of us do get kind of squeamish about but they are so like full of nutrients and so good for you. Um, and then like certain seafoods like oysters, I know a lot of people don't like those, um, but you know, just, you wanna get a variety of different things into your diet. So a lot of different vegetables, all the rainbow colors. So that way, you know, you're getting all of the different vitamins and then the different kind of meats. You don't wanna just have chicken every day. You, you wanna have chicken and beef and pork and organ meats and seafood and, bison and like wild game if you can, all of those different kind of things. 
And then you do want to incorporate some fruits too. You don't want to go nuts on the fruit because again, they're high in fructose. And even if that's a natural sugar, you still don't want to have too much of it, but it is still good, a, a good idea because they do have some vitamins inside of them that are, you know, you can't get anywhere else. And then the final component of AIP is the lifestyle portion. It's kind of a 50, 50 split. You have to have the food dialed in and you have to be very compliant with eating all of those things and not cheating because if you cheat, you're pretty much like restarting the whole inflammation again, restarting the fire. It's basically putting like tinder on the fire. But on the other half, you also want to make sure that you are taking care of your lifestyle because stress can play a major role in not healing your gut as well. So, I mean, there'd be no point to do this diet if you were completely stressed the whole time. So things like meditation, making sure that you're getting adequate sleep for you, which could be seven hours, eight hours. Some people have to do 10 to 11 hours at the first part of this because you may be so tired that you may have to sleep so much and that's fine. There's just other like stress relief techniques that you can do. I mean, and then also making sure you're getting movement in every day, but like gentle movement. You don't want to go do an Ironman triathlon because remember me, I think my whole entire autoimmune disease started because I was doing Ironman triathlons and not letting my body recover. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of time to recover in between. Uh, if you can, if you are an athlete and if you can take a break or start doing a little bit more gentle things like yoga, Pilates, walking, I do bar once a week, um, which seems to be okay as long as I say one or two times a week. If I go further than that, it wouldn't be good. Um, and then just, just these gentle kind of things like riding your bike or going swimming, you know, things that are not going to tax your body and make you have to spend, you know, four days in recovery afterwards. All these things, the food, the movement and the stress relief and, you know, just general uh, good hygiene for lifestyle really kind of all play together inside of, of the AIP diet, more of like a lifestyle kind of thing and really are very effective at helping put autoimmune disease into a remission like state. You can't cure autoimmune disease. Unfortunately, your, once your body understands how to attack itself, it always will, but you can put your symptoms to bed and make sure that it's not like impacting your daily life. And I think that's where most of us want to be. Most people do the strict part of AIP for 30 to 60 days, and then they start slowly reintroducing the foods. Uh, depending on a person, somebody might want to stay on it longer. You basically want to stay on it until you feel significantly better and most of the symptoms of your disease have subsided. When I did this the first time back in 2014, I was on the strict part for 60 days, and then I started to reintroduce things one at a time. And it actually took me 10 months to fully get everything back in because I had issues with paprika every single time. Uh, I think I've mentioned this story before, but I would get depressed every time I introduced it. And so that one took a little bit longer. I would introduce it and I would get depressed. I would keep it out for another couple like months and then I would try it again until finally I had healed enough that I was able to do it. So this time I don't feel like I have, you know, crazy symptoms and I'll, in the next video, I'll tell you why I'm doing it uh, this time. Um, so I don't think it's going to be necessarily a 60 day effort for me. It's probably going to be more like a 30 day one and then I'll start reintroducing things, but I, you know, that's hopeful. All right. So in terms of me, just for uh, day one of this AIP diet, um, I started off this morning. I'm not going to do the whole thing like I did with the whole 30 with showing you me in a bikini, weighing myself or anything like that, because I, I don't really want to emphasize this being as a weight loss kind of thing. Uh, you don't really do AIP for weight loss. There are easier ways to do it. I mean, it's a nice side effect if you are holding on to extra weight. And a lot of people that do do it that are underweight, which a lot of people that have autoimmune disease are, tend to put weight on. So it's, it's not really about appearances. If you're doing AIP for appearances, it's not a good idea. It's you really, AIP is meant more for how you feel to make sure that you're feeling your healthiest, your most vibrant self. And I'll share all the symptoms and all those things that I'm trying to get rid of in the next video. Cause this video is getting kind of long. So I'll, let me just go show you what I'm eating today. Right, for breakfast, I had broccoli soup. Mm -mm -mm. It actually was pretty good. Uh, it was broccoli, coconut milk, chicken stock, ginger, and some mint, and it was pretty good. Um, I had that with a garnish of red cabbage, bacon, sugar-free bacon from US Wellness Meats, and some mint. And then I made some sweet potato toast with avocado and fresh thyme, and a little bit more of the bacon. And then I also had a piece of bacon. 
I did wind up having a glass of green tea shortly after that because I didn't completely cut down on the coffee like I thought I was going to. Uh, I still had like a cup, you know, maybe that big yesterday. So I'm kind of scared of what's gonna happen since I do get migraine headaches. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you know what happens in the next video because I, you know, right now I feel fine, but we'll see. If I do happen to get this migraine headache, I'm not against taking Tylenol today. It's not something I want to get in the habit of, but since it's the first day, I will allow myself to do that just to, you know, to get through the major pain because they are pretty debilitating. Don't be intimidated by the fact that I have this dish all prettified. I want to do an Instagram picture for a lot of these as well. And I don't know, it's just me, you know, it's fun for me to kind of dress things up and do food photography and make the food look good, but don't feel like you have to do that. However, I'm going to say that when it is prettified like this, it does kind of make it seem a little bit more gourmet and exciting. So if you are kind of bored with your meals, try it. It is kind of fun. Here's lunch. Uh, I've got some roasted acorn squash, which I roasted up the whole entire acorn squash and I'll have that later this week. I also roasted up some beets and I had three of those and I roasted all three of them. Again, I'll have that later this week. Um, both of those I just roasted with a little avocado oil and salt. Then I have some kale that I massaged with some salt and olive oil. I have some sauerkraut, some raw radishes that I sliced thinly, some pre-cooked shrimp that I got from Vital Choice. I just heated that up in the microwave and some blueberries. And then I topped it off with some of that herb sauce that I had frozen last week. And then for dinner tonight, I have some Kahlua pork that I actually made like a month ago. Um, it's just uh, pork shoulder that was cooked in the crock pot with salt and um, I froze the extras that we had and I'm doing that tonight just because I am anticipating having this migraine, but we'll see. Uh, I'm also going to serve that with some guacamole, which is basically mashed uh, avocado with some a couple things in it, but no, no nightshades or cumin or anything. Um, and then some pineapple. I have some plantains back there that are turning black, so we'll probably fry those up a little and uh, some cauliflower rice. And I'll show that in my next video. I don't know what it is about the first few days of doing a restricted diet like this, because it wasn't like I was eating sweets after lunch before, but after I get lunch done, I always have like a craving for sweets. So what I really like to do is just have a spoonful or two of coconut butter. It has a slightly sweet taste to it, so it, it kind of gets that craving feeling for your brain, I think but because it's high in fat, it also helps uh, satiate you and get you over the hump without raising your blood sugar level any higher. It's sticky though. All right, I'm gonna go edit this video now because I have to go get my kids soon. But tell me in the comments below if you've ever done AAP or if you're doing it right now and if it's been effective for you. I always love to hear all your stories.